You know, a great follower of our channel is Kendall Garberson, and he uh, made a comment to me earlier uh, this week. I put up a podcast about uh, Sid Vesey, the great hometown hero, uh, hockey star from Woodstock, New Brunswick, who did make the NHL for one game and impressed many people with his statistics and his top play in various leagues, including university, senior, junior, major, junior, minor, pro, all together. And uh, it got his memory rolling a little bit, and he mentioned about this guy. And, you know, I completely forgot about this guy. He, uh, His name passed uh, my mind back in the 80s when I was doing uh, some research of the senior hockey leagues in northern New Brunswick. And I was told by a few of the representatives here, said, Jeffrey, too bad you never called a guy, covered a guy they, they call uh, Buck. I said, Buck who? Oh, Roy Whitlock. Now, Roy Whitlock is in the PEI Sports Hall of Fame for one major reason. Uh, the uh, vintage version of the Maritime Hockey League, uh, according to their information they presented, he was inducted all the way back in 1977, of all things, ladies and gentlemen, uh, almost on uh, Canada Day in 77. But for what people have been telling me over the years, he had to be seen to be believed. Now, according to information the PAI Sports Hall of Fame, uh, the Maritime Hockey League will never again see another individual with such scoring ability as Roy Nelson, Buck Whitlock of Charlottetown. Born January 5, 1924, Buck was a star performer in the Maritime League, which was called the Big Four, from 46 to 56, scoring 428 goals and 528 assists for 965, 56 points over that decade. In so doing, he established five uh, scoring records and twice broke the league's mark for total points. In 57, he was the Island League. Uh, uh, he was in the Island League, and in January 57, he garnered his 1,000th scoring a point in a game played at Summerside Civic Stadium. Um, now, uh, his statistics were unavailable from his days as junior hockey, but his performance with New Glasgow in the Nova Scotia APC League and his time with the Sandy Rolls of Charlottetown in Island and Maritime Leagues. Uh, uh, was also significant. It's estimated roughly that Roy has scored, or did score, more than 700 goals during his career. So he was a center arrow, big babe root of uh, maritime hockey. Now, his 10 years in the Big Four League began with the Moncton Hawks in 47, when that team had such notables as Wes Bucko Trainer, who was when inducted in 93, Marie Maurice Mousy Dowling, inducted in 1981, Sammy McManus, Chick Charlson, Huey McDonald, and Fritz Frazier to name a few. Now Buck finished 10th in the scoring race with 25 goals and 35 assists for 60, 60 points. In 48, he won his first Big Four scoring championship with 59 goals and 39 assists for 94 points. He tailed off somewhat to 49 with 18 goals and 30 assists for 48 points, which placed him 10th overall in the league scoring race. Now, this season appears to have merely been an opportunity for Buck to catch his breath because in 1950, he moved to St. John Beavers. Very good team, ladies and gentlemen, and won the scoring championship yet again. He amassed 64 goals and 49 assists for 113 points, making it his greatest scoring season up to that point. Now, he did top his personal total uh, the, uh, the following season when he won the league scoring title yet again, this time setting a league record with 57 goals and 67 assists for 126 points. Now in 52, Buck was back home in Charlottetown with the Islanders and finished seventh on the strength of 32 goals and 59 assists for 91 points. Now all this, although this was a drop of 53 points from his previous total, he redeemed himself the following year with the 53 Islanders by breaking the Big Four league total points record for a second time and winning the scoring championship with 55 goals and 73 assists for 128 points. Now, he finished third in scoring after the 54 season before taking the scoring title for a fifth and final time during the 55 campaign. He entered his big four days with the Franklin Capitals, another legendary squad, in 55-56, during which he scored 31 goals and picked up 58 assists for 89 points and a seven-place finish in the scoring race. Now, on the night of March 9, 1953, at the Charlottetown Forum, Buck was recognized for his scoring prowess on the occasion of his 300 goal. His fans presented him with a new automobile at Santa Rice, along with many other uh, gifts. 
He also had the opportunity to move on to what might some might have considered bigger and better things, but he turned out a tryout with the Montreal Canadiens and instead remained in the Maritimes. Now, in baseball, he is uh, another sport he was tremendous at. He was a most feared hitter, wielding a bat that resembled that of the mythical Ozark Ike of funny paper fame. It is said that Roy could have played in the majors had he been around at an early age. Now, Roy Whitlock's performance on the ice lanes and ball diamonds are all the more amazing when one considers the fact that he was involved in a mishap during the Second World War while serving with the Royal Canadian Navy on board the HMS Valleyfield. The ship, carrying 164 people, was torpedoed. Buck was one of only 38 survivors, and uh, because of his 14-hour stay in the cold, uh, it almost killed him. Icy waters uh, were terrible as he awaited rescue, but it caused permanent injuries to his legs, due, due to which he often required assistance in lacing up his skates. Now, Buck, uh, Roy or Buck have many, many nicknames. Mr. Maritime Hockey, Old Eagle Eye, Slick Buck, and the Old Lamplighter, which is a terminology for a person who scores a lot of gold. Um, this local uh, hockey hero didn't retire right away following his big four career. He found youngness yet again in old-timers hockey. In the 75-76 uh, season, he led the Charlottetown old-timers to the City Senior League Championship, the B Div Division Championship of the National Old-Timers Tournaments in Lethbridge, and to the runner-up position at the International Old-Timers Hockey Tournaments in Amsterdam, Holland. Sadly, Woodlock passed away on September 15, 2003, at age 79. He lived a long life and accomplished a great deal in the game of hockey. Now, what was really a, a standout for, uh, for Buck, for a lot of people, he inspired a lot of uh, maritime uh, fans and followers of senior hockey, just the legend of his play. We always like, uh, I always like to talk about in our write-ups to the hometown heroes, but I've seen articles about him, I've seen glowing reports, and it has to be yet to be seen to be believed. One person who did see him play, and he's a friend of mine up North Shore, once said he was comparable, kind of to a combination of uh, a little a little bit of Davy Keon, a little bit of Henri Richard, and a lot kind of that Phyllis Bezito driving to the net, and if you give me the puck, I'm going to put it in style. So when you're compared to three of the best players in NHL history, but the interesting, if he would have tried out for the Montreal Canadiens, it would have been, you know, good for him, but he, he probably felt he would be leaving down his many fans in the Maritimes, and there were tons. But ladies and gentlemen, all I, can, all I can tell you, I've been running a podcast channel, being a journalist, 37 years on top of that, and I was talking to a few people about uh, Bud Buck, uh, my friends in the province, and a, a few of them, the especially older ones, remember the legends, and if the legends are true, man, this guy, this guy can play. See, I was only born in 1965, so I missed all this fun, ladies and gentlemen. I covered senior hockey in New Brunswick in its last glory years of the 80s, 90s, and into uh, the 2010s with the infamous Nakawick Senior Hawk comeback at the Senior Provincials. But I wish I was around with my old camera and my old uh, typewriter to cover such a talented player. So thank you to Kendall Guyverson for the indirect requests. If you like what we're doing here, please make uh, a comment, suggestion for future podcasts. It might be something as simple as researching and providing the information to people that don't know about hometown heroes like Buck. Because hockey should be a shared experience, just just like uh, a great cook, we must share the recipes. And Maritime Hockey, ladies and gentlemen, it's the best taste in hockey you haven't tried yet if you're from the States. you got to come see a senior hockey game in New Brunswick, or a junior game, or a major junior game. The fans make it. Once COVID is done, we're going to be there in the rink like we've been for decades and decades and decades. And the, um, with the cold coffee and the warm hot dogs and, you know, the, <laughs> the strange ring configurations like Charlo, like Heartland, you know, like St. Arthur. God bless that rink. It's gone now. Anyway, thanks for listening, ladies and gentlemen, and keep on, uh, keep on keeping on. Have a good day. Bye.